everyone go and grab your seat a little bit. Hallelujah. Good evening. <laughs> you all came ready? Good. A couple of you at least. We'll try that again. Do you all come ready? Good, good, good. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Look at all the stuff I've got up here. Let me rearrange that. Uh, you all know, good evening, everyone who's watching online and all that other. If you're watching, good evening. If you're watching in the morning, then good morning. Whenever you're watching, it's good. Amen. Uh, I have some specific instruction I feel in my heart to be talking about with you all this whole weekend. And uh, you all know me long enough to know that if, if I've got the weekend, then it's going to be a series, right? So we'll start, we'll start, we'll start tonight, and then we'll end Monday night at healing school. And, uh, and uh, don't let that, don't let, don't let that, don't let that youth revival thing on Saturday scare some of you away from coming. The Holy Ghost is the Holy Ghost. You understand that? And uh, we've, we've seen some spectacular moves of the Spirit, uh, whatever you call the service. You understand that? So don't, don't, let, don't let your birth certificate scare you away. Because Scripture defined a new generation by heart, not by age. You understand that? So, and, 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 and if, if you think, well, it, we go, it's going to be loud music and, 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 and there's going to be all these kids running around and everything, well, some of that might be good for you. Yeah. Amen. Might actually be good for some of you to have some loud music <laughs> blast that earwax out of you. <laughs> so don't let that, in fact, in fact, if anything, if anything, we want to make sure that you all get in here because what God is doing is generational. You understand that? And the, gen and, and the anointing is generational. And so, and so when we try and separate the move of the Spirit and the anointing of God by what we think are classifications of generations, we, we all lose out. You understand that? So everybody got to come in and we got to bring our supply and bring all that. Anyway, I said all that, but Pastor Dustin already did a good job with the introductions. I hardly recognize him with the beard thing that was gone. I thought, who is this? Um, oh, don't want to forget, don't want to forget because I always do. Um, I have a DVD series out there that you won't want to get. It's called Prophetic Training 101. Uh, um, uh, it's, it's basic, basic training, but if you know me, basic basics are important. And, and, uh, and everywhere I go, I, 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 I slap real hard with the basics. And then, and then another one called Arising of the Suns. You want to go get that too? Uh, if you haven't yet, uh, you want to go get Releasing the Miraculous. Those of you that's online, you can get that on Amazon and everywhere else. Uh, God is using this around the world to disciple a whole new generation in the operation and the gifts um, of the Spirit of God. Amen. And um, I, I, I will have new, new books come out next year. I've just been, I've just been a little bit slower um, writing them. I've just been waiting on the Lord for that. So, but make sure you go on out to the book table. Grab the stuff because it'll help you. That, I mean, books and tapes and CDs and what all not was my initial Bible school. It was. Are you ready? Okay, announcements aside, greetings aside, happy Thanksgiving and all that kind of thing. All of that's done. You all ready? Um, uh, uh, Acts chapter 2, I have some things that I feel a good heavy on my heart to talk to you about that I feel is pertinent for the times that you and I live in. In the past year, I have walked into something that I had prayed about and, pro and had, had received prophecies about and seen in my heart about. And I, I feel like in the past year, I'm slowly to walk, I'm, I'm beginning to walk into places and graces that God has for me and anointings and manifestations that God has for me that I had, I had looked forward into. Did you know that with everything that God tells you, there is a timing for that? Yeah. And, and the timings are important because, because the, timings, the, the timings as you wait for manifestation, that's, that's, that's when you allow for that to take root on the inside of you. That's, that's when you determine what that manifestation is worth to you is when you're in the in-between time, you see? And, and so when you understand that, that there are timings, there are timings and there are seasons in the spirit. And the timing, 
You believe it for the now, but you stand in your now until it manifests in the natural. Amen. And, 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 and so, and, and the moving and the things of the Spirit and the offices that I'm stepping into, uh, uh, I'm stepping into places and, and things that God had for me that, that I'm just now uh, getting even more comfortable with. So I want you to see this in Acts chapter 2. Notice this in Acts chapter 2, verse 17, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God. Now, listen, listen up real quick. Uh, I, I'm just going to throw this in, even though there's no know what I'm going to talk about tonight. But the Lord showed me this uh, a couple, maybe one, two years ago. Uh, you know how in 1 Corinthians that, 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 uh, and 10, did you know that scripturally there are only three categories of people on the earth? The three categories of people on the earth are uh, the, 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 the Jewish nation, the Jewish people. They're the people with the old covenant. Then you have the Gentiles, the world, the nations. They're the people with no covenant. And then you have the church. And the church is people who, who the, the church simply means ecclesia. Ecclesia means called out ones. And the called out ones are those who are called out from those of the old covenant and called out from those of no covenant. And we form the, this thing called the church, and the church has the new covenant. Now, uh, I started seeing uh, in, in, in Scripture, and I started seeing around, and I started seeing in the Spirit, that especially in the times that you and I live in, uh, when we talk about the end times, have you noticed how some people get real caught up about earthquakes and famines and all that other? And then you have other people, and again, thank God for Israel, because Israel is a sign, but all they look at is Israel, Right? And I, start, and, and I started having the Lord show me this, that, that, that actually the truth of the matter is the earthquakes and the famines and whatnot, they are the sign for the world that things are coming to an end. Israel, the, the reunification of Israel and, and all that, that good stuff that's happening there and the threats against Israel, that's a sign for Israel that they're in the end. But did you know that the sign for the church Listen now, the sign for the church, because you and I are in the church. The sign for the church, listen to this, verse 17, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. So notice that the sign for the church to the church will be put the outpouring of the spirit on the church. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for the outpouring of the spirit of God. So then the outpouring of the Spirit of God is, now, now e even notice how I quoted that, and that's how people usually quote it, the outpouring of the Spirit of God. Did you know that that's not actually what it says? Look carefully how it says this. And I will pour out of my Spirit. Now, what's the difference uh, between him pouring out his Spirit and him pouring out of his Spirit? Listen to this. If he pours out his Spirit, that's a one-time event. He poured it there on the day of Pentecost, he's done. But if he pours out of his spirit, he can pour out of his spirit every day, any day, everywhere, in every generation, he can go on outpouring of his spirit. So then the outpouring of his spirit isn't just for the day of Pentecost, the outpouring of the spirit is for every day. So then every day, in every way, wherever I am, I have a right to expect for the spirit to be outpoured on me. Why? Because that's, the, that's my end time sign. That's the primary end time sign I'm looking to as the church. Doesn't invalidate all those other signs, but I'm looking for the outpouring of the Spirit of God. So, so, so then, but so, so notice this, that the outpouring of the Spirit of God is tied into the times that you and I live in. Now, what is the first sign of the outpouring? Look at this. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Hear me, I tell you this by the Spirit of God, this upcoming year that you and I are walking into, more than ever before, we will have to have our ears tuned to the prophetic word that God gave the church. It won't be enough anymore just to live by what we think the word says. We have to have a sure word from heaven to come and stabilize us and steady us and set us in the high place. It is time for the church of Jesus Christ to have our ears tuned to what the prophetic word of God has to say. Ephesians 2.20. Ephesians 2.20. Ephesians 2.20. Some things are easy to yell about, but yelling about something don't establish you. Teaching does. 
So I, I, I found that even with something like, a, something like the manifestation of the Spirit or casting out of demons and, and whatnot, what, what you would think is more, um, the more demonstrative things in Scripture, if we would just teach about them and, and have a grasp on them, we could grow with confidence in what God wants to do. You understand that? Ephesians 2. Hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 20 says, talking about the church, having been built on the foundations of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Now, here's a couple of ways you can interpret that. One, you could say that being built on the apostles and the prophets is to be built on Scripture. Why? Because Scripture was primarily in the Old Testament written by the prophets, in the New written by the apostles. So that's one way you could, you could interpret that. But another way you could interpret that and rightly so, I believe scripturally so, is that God intends for the apostolic and prophetic voices to go on speaking and bringing foundations to us. Why do I say that? Because in Ephesians 4, jump on over there. Ephesians 4, talking about, talking about these Christ gifts, these Christ anointings, these Christ manifestations. Why do I call them Christ manifestations? Why do I call them Christ gifts? Why do I call them Christ, uh, 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 Christ anointings? Because every one of these that we're going to read about came from who Christ is. Look at this, um, Ephesians 4, and he himself, verse 11, and he himself, talking about Jesus, and he himself gave some to be apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Why? Why were they given? For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith. Now, in a lot of, in, in a lot of portions of the body of Christ, we have no problem talking about pastors, no problem talking about evangelists, no problem talking about teachers. It's those other two we kind of shy off. Listen, here are my rules when it comes to me preaching. If you're quiet, I'll assume you're not understanding me and preach longer. If you loud, I'll assume you're enjoying yourself and I'll preach longer. Why would we say that out of the five manifestations here of Christ, we make room for three and not make room for the other two? When those other two, Ephesians 2 tells us, is the foundation of the church. No, listen, listen. I'm, 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 I'm starting to see, I'm starting to understand that more than ever before, we have to have our ears tuned, not just to pastors and teachers and evangelists, but God's raising up apostolic and prophetic voices in our midst. And I don't, and I don't mean, listen, here's what I do not mean by that. I don't mean you call in to some 1-800-give-me-a-prophecy number or someone on the other, and then, and then you, send, you send them some money, and then they give you... I'm not talking, I'm not, not talking about that. I'm not, and you can easily get you on a mailing list or a phone list, and they'll call you every morning. As long as you send them however much money, they'll give you some little, the Lord says He loves you, then the Lord says He don't want you to, to mess up today. Kind of a prophecy, you know. No, I'm talking, I'm, talk, I'm, talk, I'm talking about God has to raise these ministry offices up. But in order for him to do that, two things have to happen. One, we have to pray for us to have an ear to hear. And then two, we've got to make way for those ministry offices to speak. Amen. Because outside of that, outside of these ministry offices speaking, notice this, we cut ourselves off from the offices that were Jesus Christ. So Jesus was the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Why would, why would I just want three quarters of Jesus? Why, why, why would I just want three-fifths of him and leave out the other, the, the other two out? No, something has to... Listen, our heart got to want all of him. Amen. Our heart got to want all of him. And, and I'm walking out. Hear me. I'm walking out to where, to where I'm receiving... You know... Can I tell you this? I've always been a bit of a prophecy magnet. I guess because I get to be at however many meetings I'm at, you know, every year, and, 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 and I'm usually along, along the front section at least, you know, and maybe because I look a little different from other people in the crowd, you know. And that's not the only reason. That's not the only reason, you know. That's not the only reason. Uh, but but, but I, I... Prophecy come my way real easy. 
Well, for one thing, for one thing, for one thing, I did prophecy easy. And my, that's my seed come back to me. Did you hear me? Yeah, I'm, I'm quick to lay hands on anyone and say what I feel like is on my heart for them. And so that's, that, that ought to come back on me easy. But, but what I mean by making room for the apostolic and prophetic voices, it's not just that we run around looking for prophecies, but that our heart is tuned for God to instruct us. Yeah, because if all you do is run around and, and you need a prophecy every morning to get your day going, then you're in trouble. You understand that? Yeah, but on the other hand, but on the other hand, when your heart is tuned, God, you have to refine me. God, you have to help me. I need to move. I need, I need divine insight on where to go and how to do it and who to do it with and when to do it. And you got to speak to me one way or another. Speak to me. God will send voices to you. God will send people to you. God, God, will, God, 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 God will, will cause verses to jump out at you. God will cause when Pastor Max preaches, something somewhere will come out of the pulpit and smack you upside the head so hard you'll know it's the Holy Ghost. So I, I, I get a lot of prophecies, and I, I've, learned, I've learned not to respond just because it's a prophecy. You understand that? I've learned that in some cases, I've got to sit back and, 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 and put that thing on a shelf. It doesn't mean that they're wrong. It might mean that I'm not in position to receive it right now, and they're telling me something. So I just, I just put it on the shelf, and I'm like, well, okay, if that's what it's supposed to be, you work it out. Did you know, did you know that there's a difference between a false prophecy and a false prophet? Yeah, a false prophet could, could simply be someone speak wrong. A false prophet is somebody who chooses to speak wrong on purpose, trying to lead you astray. Yeah. So I've, 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 learned, I've learned that. I've learned that. And, and I, I, I've had a new appreciation come on me for the prophetic utterances that God has sent my way over my life. And I've seen how accurate they are. And <laughs> something we're going to get into tonight. One of the prophecies that always come my way, always come my way, is that, is that, is that in, in my ministry and in what I do, there will come an activation and an impartation to those that sit under my ministry. And I'm telling you, I'm believing for some activation and impartation to come your way tonight. Yeah. Why? Because it's time for the gift and calling of God on the inside of you to be stirred up. It's necessary now. And uh, so, so we have, to, we, have to, we have to learn to treasure this thing called prophecy right. And you treasure it wrong when you overemphasize it, and you also treasure it wrong when you underemphasize it. you got to give it its proper place. Obviously, no prophetic utterance will be outside of what God's Word already tells you. So, 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 so all of God's Word is for you, but all of God's Word is not for you in the, in the here and now. Right? That would be like if you go to a restaurant and they hand you that menu and that menu have like probably like a hundred items on there or whatever. It, it's all available for you, but you're not all going to have that hundred items right now. I, at least I hope not. So. Right? So prophecy then would be, would, be, would be God picking out something from that menu for you. Y'all didn't, didn't seem too excited about God picking something out from the menu for you. Uh, and so then that's the difference between the Logos and the Rhema. So then this would be the Logos right here, the Bible. But Rhema would be God speaking something from this to you. So the Logos and the Rhema go together. Because then the Logos lays a, a base, a foundation of what God intends to say to me, how He intends to speak to me, what He intends to speak to me. But, but the Holy Spirit from that, He picks something out and says that, that something from that, He picks it out for me. And so we've had to, I've had to, I've had to, I've had to tune my ears. And, and, and the more I have, the more, that's why, that's why Paul says writing to the church in Corinth, not to despise prophecies. Did you know that that was the one thing he told them not to despise? So, so that, must, that must mean that there's something about that prophecy aspect. And, and, oh, and oh, by the way, not all prophecy is foretelling. Some prophecy is foretelling. Can I say that again? Did you want to hear that again? Yeah. Not all prophecy is foretelling. Some prophecy, most prophecy is foretelling. In other words, it's, it's God proclaiming something rather than God predicting something. So in other words, if under the, anon if under the unction and under the anointing, Pastor gets up and he says, and Jesus says, he's come to give you life and life abundantly. You can take that as a prophecy from God. Why? Because he was speaking forth under the unction and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You all miss a good place to say amen, by the way, when I said that. So, 
in understanding and appreciating prophetic utterances. Oh, my. How desperately you and I, in, 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 the, in the time that we live in, in the world that we live in, how desperately we need to make sure that of all the voices in the world, we hear God loudest and clearest. For sure, for it, it, it's, not, and it's not any time for us to be wondering, oh, gee, I wonder if, the, if that was God, or I, I'm, I'm not sure if that was my mother-in-law, was it God, which one is, I'm not quite sure. No, it, more than ever before, we got to know what we got to know. And, 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 and part of that, part of that is learning to honor and respect anointing. Now, now, do, do, those of you who follow me on social media, and, and, and if, you, if you don't follow me on social media, if you don't follow me on Facebook and on Instagram at I am just James, if you don't follow me on those accounts, then God doesn't want you to have a social media account. <laughs> and th- those, of you, those, of you, those of you who do, who do follow me, you know that I hang around I have the privilege, I have the honor, and the truth of the matter is, in what God called me to do is necessary for me. But I have the privilege of hanging around 80-year-olds a lot. I, I have the privilege of hanging around some 80-year-old generals who pioneered movements and, 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 and pioneered an entire reformation in some cases. And can, can, I, can I tell you something about that? And in most of them, I got their cell number right here and can call them. But can I tell you one, one thing about that? And hear me. One thing about that, because I've had pastors ask me, I've had people ask me, well, how do you, how did that, how do you get in? I mean, who, how did that happen? We want to, can you, you know, I mean, can you hook us up? We want to, we... Number one, I didn't try to make that happen. God just, I just ended up in a room and God gave me favor with them. I needed that impartation and that anointing come up. I needed those hands to be laid on me. But I'll tell you one thing. I'll, I'll tell you one thing I always do do when I get in those rooms. I go in respectfully. Hear me. And please understand, I'm not hung up on titles because, like I said, on social media, I call myself I am just James. So I'm not hung up on titles. But of all of them that I know and of all of them that I have a personal relationship, I never call them by their first name. I choose, and they've told me, call me so-and-so, and I'm like, no, you're, I want to I make sure I honor you right. It's called respect. It's, I've tried this side of the room. <laughs> Not sure that you all heard me. It's called respect. Amen. And, the, and the further away you step from that, the harder it will be to receive from that. So I'm not doing it just because they have to be put up on a pedestal. I'm doing it for my sake because in doing that, I make sure that I, on purpose, keep myself at a distance so to where, so to where when they say something, I recognize it not just as so-and-so speaking, but I recognize it as, as the voice of the Lord. I, I, I don't think it's wrong. I still don't think it's wrong to call people sir and ma'am. I, I, don't, I don't think everybody ought to be on a first-name basis with everyone else. Might not be the popular thing to say nowadays, but it's true anyway. The ish, listen now, again, hear me. On social media, I choose to call myself I am just James. So I don't, I'm not hung up on titles. I, I, I didn't call myself I am great grand high apostle big Pumba James. That's not my social media handle. It's I'm just James. So I, I don't have a problem with that. But I did that on, 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 on purpose. Did you hear me? Yep. And I've noticed, because I've been, around, I've been around enough to see, I've noticed that the people who get around those generals who are casual with them, they receive the least from them. And this level of anointing that I want to walk in, that at a measure I am walking in, that I intend to walk into even more, it requires a level of respect to walk into that. You say, well, you ought, not, you ought not be idolizing those people. You ought not be idolizing those people. I'm not idolizing those people. But, but you have to understand that the anointing only falls on flesh. I had someone foolishly 
jokingly say to me, not anyone here that you would know of. At a service, he was joking foolishly, like I said, but don't worry, I fixed it. He, he jokingly said, oh, we didn't come to hear you. We didn't come to hear you. I just finished preaching. We didn't come to hear you. We didn't and I said, then you wasted your time driving out here because the Lord only speaks on flesh, through flesh. The anointing fall on flesh. If you didn't want to hear me, you could have stayed home. He said, well, that sounds proud. You mean we came up? No, we came to hear the Holy Ghost. No, you came to hear the Holy Ghost through me. Amen. Why? Because the anointing fall on flesh. This nonsense that we just want to bring everyone down so we can lift everyone up. up. When you do that, no one, has, no one has any value. If everyone's your best friend, no one's your best friend. But that's just Christian love. No, that's just you being foolish. That's not Christian love. Why? Because you've got to learn to recognize the voices God sent, sent into your life. So the voices God sent into my life, I make sure I serve them. I make sure I serve them. Hear me. I go out and buy food, bring it home for them. I do. Why? Because, because impartations come as a result of, of serving, not me budding up with anyone. Some of these things need to be talked about because people don't necessarily know how to respond to the anointing. And they think, well, if I'll, just be your, if I'll just be your new best friend, I'll draw from what's on your life. No, 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 no. If you learn to honor what's on my life and serve what's on my life, you draw from my life. So I, I very frequently tell my pastors, the ones I talk to, I don't serve you by being your friend. In fact, the moment I am, I'm not able to serve you no more. Why? Because once I'm, once I'm your best buddy, you won't hear what the Lord has to say to you through me. Then I'll, I'll, be, I'll be of no effect in your life. Now again, this is still the same James that you've known for all these years. So you know me. You, you know my heart enough to know this isn't about title. and posi- No, it's about learning to pull on the anointing that God sends into your life. I've met past, and again, my reference is going to be pastors because that's primarily who I, who I, who I I've met pastors that I know I had a word for. I've met pastors I know I was supposed to have a relationship with. I know I was supposed to have an impartation to. But they, 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 they didn't see it. Then six months down the road, I'll find out something that happened, and I thought, you know, if we had connected then, I would have fixed that for them before that even happened. Oh, I'm, 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 real, ca- I'm real big on this. Why? Because when God sends me something, it falls on me to treasure the gifts He sent me. So I'm real careful about this. And whenever I get around, whenever I get around these generals, boy, I make sure I go in ready to serve. Can I tell you this? I make sure I go in with honor seed too. Yeah, I make sure I give them something. Hey, listen, Christmas coming up, wouldn't hurt you all to send Pastor Mac a, a card and, and put something in there and say, Pastor Mac, we want to bless you. That was, that was pathetic. I'm going to try this out of the room. <laughs> You'll do better when I come back. It wouldn't hurt you. Send Pastor Mac something Christmas. Put something in there and say, Pastor Mac, thank you. Thank you for sowing to our life. Honor. Honor. I'm not, and, and again, hear my heart. I'm not telling you anything I don't do. I'm telling you what I did to get what I got. So I make sure, I, I make sure I, I plant good seed and good ground. I'm strategic about that. I am strategic. You hear me? I'm strategic about that. See, I got born again when I was 13. And I got born again reading one of Brother Hagin's little book, I Went to Hell. That's how I got born again. And at the back of that little magazine, at the back of that, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And, 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 and at, at the back of that little book, there was a little line on there that said you could write in and, and, and get you a magazine, you know. So I wrote in there and I got a magazine. Now, back then, they would send it to you anywhere in the world for free. Now, you've got to pay $20 if you're international, which is a good thing because I couldn't have afforded $20 back then. 
See? So I would get the magazine. And in the magazine back then, they had a little envelope, a return envelope where you could order. And back then, you could, every month they would have, they would have a tape series. Notice I said tape series. Back then, they would have a tape series on sale. So whatever tape series was on sale, that would be what I'd buy every month. Then one month, I noticed that right at the bottom there, they had a little thing. They had a little thing that said you could, you could send money and partner with. Now listen, I grew up Catholic in Singapore. I didn't know anything about, I mean, I didn't know anything about that. I saw that and I thought, what? You can do that? I want to do that. So did you know, I started, as, I, as a 13-year-old, I sent them $2 every month. Did you, did you know that today I teach for those schools? Yeah. But listen, 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 listen. That's why your seed prepares your future for you. So when you give your tithe and your offering on a Sunday morning, listen, you don't want to do it casually. You don't just want to dig in there and whatever loose change is just plunk it on down. No, you, you, want, to, you want to say, God, only you know what I need next week. So you got to tell me what I need to sow this morning or this evening or whenever you're giving. Something happens when you honor the things of God. When you honor the things of God and when you give honor to the things of God, that honor come back on you. And so I, I'm, 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 I'm real careful because I realize that my life, what God have for me, hear me, what have God have for me he had to put me around these others, these generals. He had to put me in those rooms with them. And because I'm in those rooms with them, my attitude is there must be something on them that I need. Listen now, not something on me that they need. Even though the truth of the matter is I end up serving them. And I many times end up preaching for them. And many times they'll tell me to have the service where they want to sit down. But my attitude always is, forget, I want to sit down. I want to hear you. Because if you do... If he minister, there'll be something I can draw from them that I need on my life. Amen. And I've been around too many situations where people are just too casual. Sometimes they're just ignorant. Ignorant means they don't know how to. But sometimes I've been around situations, they're just too ignorant to how, learn how to pull, pull on the anointing. Don't, don't know how to. That's why we're having this conversation tonight. First Kings, come with me. I want you to see what the prophetic word can do for you. I very recently had a whole host of prophecies come flooding my way, and I've learned to pay close attention to those words that come my way, because Paul writing to Timothy said that we can wage a good warfare by the prophecy spoken over our life. And again, please don't walk out of this service and think that we're all about prophecy. No, this is just a message about personal prophecy. The living word is not all, there's a whole lot of other things living word is all about. Living word is all about everything. You understand that? So, but, but this, but we're focusing on this because there is an aspect to that prophetic flow that we have to make room for, we have to, and we have to honor, and we have to, to understand how to cooperate with. Verse 7, uh, uh, um, um, 1 King 17, and Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, listen, listen to what he said, as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand. Uh, I like his confidence that he could say he stood before God. Yeah, there comes a boldness when you've stood before God. Did, did, you know, did you know that people who've been with God are a whole lot bolder than people who haven't been with God? I've, I've, noticed, I've noticed that people who haven't been with God are very concerned about what everyone else thinks about them. Yeah, and people who have been with God don't care because they only want to live to please one. And if, and if you haven't learned the power of pleasing one, then you'll have to try and please, live your life pleasing everyone. When Jesus said, I come to set you free, that you might be free indeed, part of the free indeed, listen, I'm convinced years of pastoral ministry, I'm convinced that the main thing he came to set us free from, one of the main things he came to set us free from was the freedom of what other people think of us. Right. Why? Because as long as you're concerned about what other people think about you, you'll never dare step out of the boat. Imagine how, Im, 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 imagine how crazy it would have been for Peter. You know, there he is. There's 12 people in the boat. The boats are rocking and are rolling. 
And then Jesus is like, come. And he's like, he's stepping out. And you've got to wonder, why didn't the other 11 go with him? Because if, if you see some guy walking on the water, you probably want to join him. Unless they thought he was going to sink, though. Right? So they must have been there like, well, let's just wait and see. Let's just wait and see. Because we don't really know how that's going to go. You just, let's just wait and see. Yeah. So, so you gotta, you got you to gotta have that to where you don't care. You see, that's, that's why when you come into service like that, that's what that running around, that's what that laughing, that's what that all, that's, the power isn't in the running around. The power is in you getting free so that you don't care what other people think about you when you're running around. That's where the power is. And that, that's, where, that's where the training has to come in. So to where I just don't care. If you think I look like a fool, it's okay. I'm going to be the fool with God's answers in my life. Amen. Doesn't make a difference. When you get to that point, then you just don't care anymore. But when, when you don't care anymore, then everything he wants for you, you, can, you get the grasp. So as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, listen to this. There shall be no dew nor rain these years except at my word. Ooh, look, at, look at that boldness. Notice he didn't say except at God's word. He said except at my word, did you know that there is a position you can stand in with God that you already have by virtue of what Christ has done for you, by the virtue of the grace and the mercy of God? There is a position in your life where you can stand up into it and say, my words equal God's word. When I say it'll rain, it'll rain. When I say no rain, there'll be no rain. And I prophesy to you, and I tell you, there are some situations in your life where you got to command rain, and there are some other situations in your life where you're going to say, no rain for you. You've had enough rain. You're going to dry up and die. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. Uh, don't you love it that the prophecy he gave affected him? Because when there was no, no, no rain, well, that meant that he didn't have water to drink either. <laughs> I, think sometimes, I think sometimes we're too quick, we're, we're too quick to pray things, we're too quick, too quick to prophesy things without recognizing that what we pray and what we prophesy is probably going to affect us too. Sometimes when I get around people that's always praying about revival and all that, I kind of wonder, I, I wonder, do you recognize that if revival hit, that probably means you're going to have to change your schedule for one thing. See, a move, of God does, the, a move of God doesn't fit into our schedule. It's probably quite likely that a move of God will be outside of our schedule. So sometimes when I meet people who all they want to do is pray for a move of God, all they want to do is pray for a revival, all they want to do is pray for God to move, I think what they mean is God move on those other folk because we're okay. Those are the folk there that need some sort of move, God. Those are the folk that need some sort of revival and, and what they don't recognize is, I've, I've met groups who prayed in revivals and when the revival hit, decided not to walk into that revival. I've, I've, actually, met, I've actually met groups that way. They prayed and they prayed and they prayed and then the revival, and then the move got hit and they were like, no, we don't want that. Those are not the kind of people we want anyway. <laughs> no, listen, praying, praying for a move of God implies you intend to move as well. And the word of the Lord came to you because now he was affected. He was affected by the drought. But then God said, verse 3, get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook. We're frozen to the Jordan and it shall be that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Notice that there was a specific place for him to where he had an appointment with the ravens. Which means if he had not positioned himself to be where the ravens were going to be, the ravens would have just been circling looking for their guy. Ah, listen, listen, listen. Your ravens are circling. Your ravens are looking for you. God's got ravens. He, they've got divine packages for you. You just need to be in position to receive from what God has sent you already. The raven's a filthy bird. Nothing clean about it at all. Digs all kind of dead stuff and dirty food and all that other. 
Did you know that God has some real unusual ways where He can get things to you? Don't say no to the packages God sends. Yeah. There are specific locations and there are specific timings to the things of God. That's why we need an ongoing relationship with the Holy Ghost. Because the Word can assure me that He has things for me and He has timings for me, but it's the Holy Ghost that tells me what He has for me and when He has it for me. And that's why we need to have the Holy Ghost speak to us more than ever before. We need to have the Spirit of God. We need to have a, a, a working relationship. Let's put it that way. We got to have a hearing relationship. We got to have a uh, conversational relationship with the Holy Ghost to where, to where I hear Him and He knows I hear, I hear Him and I hear Him enough to obey Him. Because Elijah could have said, you know what, God, I mean... Those birds fly anyway, so why couldn't you just have them fly my way and I don't have to move then? Right? I mean, he had to walk. They could fly. It's a whole lot easier flying than it is walking. <laughs> you could find out real easy. Huh? So notice then that, that for him to be in position, he had to obey the prophetic word that come. Can I tell you this? All prophetic words require obedience and in, that from the instruction that come to you. Because most prophetic words, personal, I'm talking about personal prophecy. Now, you, you've got Bible prophecy and you've got, you've got general prophecy, but I'm talking about personal prophecy now. Well, I felt like the Lord told me this. Well, if he told you, if he told you, he was gonna, you you're going to get something from him, he probably also told you how to get that. And the how and the when and the who and the will probably get you to the, to the what. You hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at this, look at this. So he went. Oh, I love this. This is, this is the power verse right here. This is the power verse right here. So he went, it says, and he did according to the word of the Lord. Now, right there, if you get nothing else from tonight's message, that right there is worth you coming for. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. If you can position yourself to where you will go and do according to the word of the Lord, then everything that that word promised you belongs to you right at that point. And here's how you and I, here's how you and I have to be positioned. Our heart has to be positioned that our, that, that our attitude is, so we will go and do according to the word of the Lord. And this was a spoken word. This was a spoken word. It wasn't just a written word because he had no verse to turn to. If he could get this kind of communication with God, ah, if he could have this kind of communication with God, how much more you and I? Listen, Elijah had God with him. We had God in us. It's a whole lot greater for God to be in us than just for Him to be with us. But if He could get this kind of direction, this kind of clarity, this kind of protection, this kind of provision just with God with Him, how much more you and I with God in us? Verse 6, the ravens brought Him bread and meat in the morning. Don't you love that the ravens brought him bread and meat? Doesn't that just speak to the generosity of God, yeah. that it was bread and meat? Because, I mean, you would imagine that if there was a drought going on, God, you know, he could have, he could have gone cheap and said, just bread's enough. You don't need all that meat. Cut back on that, you know, all that cholesterol and all that. No, but God gave him bread and meat. So when God gives you something, he gives you an abundance. No, even if it has to come by raven, God can bring abundance to you. <laughs> the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. So he had more than the one meal a day. Don't you love that? So when God supplies, he supplies. And he drank from the brook and it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had, been no rain. there had been no rain in the land because he prophesied no rain in the land. And he said there would be no rain until I say so. And he hadn't said so. So now the brook dried up. So now he was thirsty because the brook dried up because of the prophecy he gave. There's a whole other message in that about us being in culture. 
I think, I think we may want to read. Sometimes when I get around groups and they just want to talk about how God's going to judge this, this nation and God's going to judge that nation and God's going to judge this and God's going to judge that because of all the whatever. And I'm like, but you realize that if he judges that, you're in that too. You know. Right. Okay, well, never mind. Here's where I said all of that comes come to this. Verse 8. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have, listen, listen to what God said. I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. Notice that everywhere God commanded him to go, God had already made provision for him. Can I tell you this? 2023. Can I tell you this? 2023. That, that because God has already ordained for you to be in 2023, there is already provision for you. Listen now, listen now. There is provision for you. Listen, there is favor for you. There is wisdom for you. There are doors open for you. Some doors he'll close for you. Some doors he'll open for you. But there are places and there are positions waiting for you in 2020. I say that by the unction of the Spirit of God. 2023 is waiting for you. And we don't have to walk in thinking, oh, you know, we don't know what 2023 is. I don't need to know what, I don't need to know everything in 2023. I just need to know that God's in that 2023 already for me. Amen. I don't need to know everything. That's right. I've commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the city of the gate, indeed, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, please, bring me a little water in a cup that I might drink. And as she was going to go get it, he called out to her, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So listen to what she said. So she said, as the Lord your God. Notice she said the Lord your God, not the Lord our God. Notice how she also recognized that God was involved in this. Right? So she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I'm gathering a couple of sticks that I might go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we might eat and we might die. Man, this lady was dramatic. <laughs> because, because, because if you remember what God told the prophet, he said, I have told a widow there to provide for you. That means that by the time this happened, God had already spoken to her that he was sending her a prophet that she was going to look after. So she was testing him out. Can I tell you this? Right now, right now, turn your faith loose for this. Right now, there are already people in your future. There are already situations that God has spoken to to provide for you. Listen, I, I speak that over you. God has already provided people. God has already provided wisdom and all kinds of things that you need. He's already spoken to them and said, my son and my daughter is approaching. And when they do, you will honor them and you will favor them and you will give them what they need. So then Elijah wasn't going around shopping to see which, which, which who had food for him. He was just simply obeying the Holy Ghost. And by the time he, when he did, God had already spoken to that lady right there. God had divine appointments for you. And I prophesy that over you. God had divine appointments for you in 2023. God had divine rooms for you, open for you. God had divine people for you. God had divine timing for you. I speak by the Spirit. God has divine something set up for you. And Elijah said, verse 13, and Elijah said, do not fear, go, <laughs> and do as you have said. She just said, we're going to eat and die. So you could tell that Elijah probably didn't get too many counseling requests. <laughs> because that's not the kind of thing you want to tell anyone when they talk like that, you know. <laughs> go, do as you have said. I kind of like that part about that myself. I, that's kind of the philosophy I use as a pastor when people come to me for counseling. That's probably why I don't get too many counseling appointments. <laughs> Let's, listen to this. But make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me. And then afterwards, make some for yourself and your son. Ooh, my Lord, my Lord. You can, you can, just, you can, you can just now imagine what the Jerusalem Times would have said the next morning. <laughs> Prophet 
takes last cake from a dying widow. <laughs> Did you know that, that when, when what is, when you present something to God, it opens up heaven for you. God's intention was not that she would make a last cake and give it to the prophet and that she and her son die. God's intention was that in, in her obeying the prophetic word, the prophet would eat, she would eat, her son would eat. But you see, that only come, that unusual instruction only come by obey, obeying what the Holy Ghost is. I want to challenge you. This would be a great time this year while the rest of this year, well, how, however much of this year we still have left, for God to give you some unusual instructions for next year. Come on. I'm believing for big next year. I'm believing for more next year. I'm, I'm believing for surplus and abundance and all kind of, I don't just mean money, but all kind of, but, 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 but that would probably mean that I'm going to step up and do something a little bit different from how I usually do. It, 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 it might mean I'm, I, that I, I'm going to present my last cake to a prophet that God sent my way. You see, this is the part, this is the part that separates, this is the part that separates. She could have stayed with her last cake. She probably would have died afterwards. She could have said, listen, you're just some guy walking, talking about some God I don't know about. What Israel is, I got these couple of sticks, I got, I got this flower, I, I got this, that's what I have. And I don't know anything about you or your God. Why would I, why would I want to Risk it all. But God sent the prophet. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm more convinced the more I read this. Listen now. God didn't send the prophet there just so that the prophet could eat. God sent the prophet there so that she could live. Yeah. Hear me, hear me, hear me. God, because God, God could have continued sending food by, 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 by Raven Express. Right? God could, have gone on sending her, God could have gone on sending him food by Raven Express or, or any kind of bird they're flying around, you see? So it, 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 it wasn't for lack of, of ravens that God had to send him, send him over to, to the widow. No, God was sending him to the widow for her sake because she wasn't at a point where she could learn to receive from ravens yet. And you, you, that's how you got to see. That's how you got to see when, when you got pastors God put in your life. He sent them as a gift to me so that they could speak into my life and stir in me and deposit and impart to me something that I wouldn't have otherwise. So she went, oh, I love this. I love this. I love this. For thus saith the Lord of Israel, the, the bin of flour shall not be used... Listen to this, listen to this. The bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. Ah, listen, listen, listen. Here's a verse for you to stand on. Here's a verse for you to stand on. Here's a verse for you to stand on. Your bin of flour shall not be used up. Your jars of oil, listen now, your jars of oil will not run dry until, until, until God turns it around for you. You'll have continual, miraculous supply in your household so that you and yours can eat. Now, because every, every service I do is a classroom, you recognize I'm not just preaching logos here. There is an unction of the Holy Ghost speaking to us in the room. There is prophetic word come in the room. There's a prophetic utterance come as, as we're reading these, these words from the logos. Don't go into 2023 being concerned about what, what all else is on, on the news. Because your God's still going to provide for you flour, oil, and everything else good that you need. All, all, all we need to do, all we need to do is learn to recognize His voice and honor His voice and recognize Him and honor Him. Amen. So she went... I love how this is phrased. Notice this. So she went and did according to the word of Elijah. Notice the interplay of words, how the word of the Lord was now the word of Elijah. Notice how both their words were kind of one and the same. 
this is what the prophetic utterance will bring to your life. To where the prophetic utterance amplify God's word to you. So that, 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 that means that as you all are sitting on a Sunday, a Saturday, a Wednesday night, as, as Pastor Mac and, and Pastor Jim and, and Pastor Dustin, as, 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 as they're all preaching, you want your heart to be in a position to where the Holy Ghost may take, may take a word, a sentence, a scripture, a, an illustration, a something from what they're preaching, and that just goes boom on the inside of you, and you want to say, that's mine. Yeah. I'm taking that. So she went and did according to the word of the Lord. And she, oh, listen now. And she and he, oh, now it's a household. Now it's not just a son. See that? So that means, I guess, when the relative found out that she had oil and flour, they all came over. Huh? Now, 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 think about that. Think about that. Think about that. So God then, in sending the prophet to her, wasn't just thinking about the prophet. He wasn't just thinking about her and her son. Apparently, he was thinking about her household. God's mercy and miracles for you are not just for you. It's for your household and those around you because God intends through you and by you to help those around you. In 2023, there'll be plenty of people. Oh, the Lord spoke this to me. 2023, there'll be plenty of people around us that, that need help. And we'll, God will position us to help them. The bin of flour was not used up. Nor did the jar of oil run dry. According to the word of the Lord, which he spoke through Elijah. More than ever before. Activations. Where are the musicians at? Where are the musicians at? Run on up and play something for us, guys. More than ever before, ah, oh, there's so much I wanted to, so much more I wanted, so much more I wanted to say to you all. But that's what we got Saturday and Sunday for, right? I have this, I have this on my heart to do tonight. I have this on my heart to do tonight. I want to lay hands on, on some of you. Because, because, because with every, every message that's pre preached preach prophetically, Every message that's pre preached prophetically, there, there have to come a contact point. You understand that? There have to come a contact point. So here, here, here's what we're going to do. Go ahead and just play something that, that they can't sing, guys. Play something that they, they can't sing with you. Here's, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. And I'm just trying to obey God. And there was a season in my life when I would go and lay hands on everyone everywhere because the Lord told me, and then there was a season where I didn't do that. For a long time, I didn't do that. Partly because the Lord told me, He was teaching me about how the anointing was flowing in other different ways. Uh, but, but tonight, if anything in there leaped on the inside of you, I want to seal it with the laying on of hand coming down front now. I should help us with that, all that other, and all that other that's there. I don't make a big deal of these things. Go ahead, musicians, play something whenever, however. Hallelujah. Here are the instructions when I come lay hands on you. When I come and lay hands on you, nobody needs to get up and go. If you feel like kneeling and, and, and falling, just whatever, you, you leave when you're good and ready. You hear me? Leave when you're good and ready. Ushers, don't, don't, don't make anyone go anywhere. Nobody needs to go. Do nothing. Those of you that's watching online, the same grace and the same anointing that's in this room now can affect you right where you are, can touch you right where you are. I sense change in the room. A change for good. A change for good. But, 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 but uh, I, I'm walking into this with, 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 with the laying on of hands, with, with, with the tangibility of the anointing that, that God placed back in my life again. I'm stirring and imparting and activating on the... After hands are laid on you, again, stay as long as you want. 
you can literally stay as long as you need to tonight with all that's going on. Uh, I sense the tamperification, the a tangibility of that prophetic flow in the room. I hear him say, I'm turning it around. It won't be as long as you think. It's not a You can just stay in this place of receiving. I just want to take a moment and just say that uh, we're formally closing service. And so for everybody in our online audience, thank you for joining us. Make sure you join us. You come back and join us this weekend for more ministry with Dr. James Tan. Um, everybody here in the room, you're welcome to stay and continue to be ministered to. Thank you. We love you and we appreciate you.